John Bacall travels to great depths and incredible heights to investigate nature's mysteries. The hunt for the solar neutrino is essentially an answer to how does the sun shine? This search brought the young theoretical astrophysicist John Bacall to the Black Hills of South Dakota and to Homestake. Homestake is a working gold mine, but to observational astronomer Ray Davis, it served as a three-mile deep neutrino detector. Here, Bacall and Davis collected and counted the small particles in the large tank. Too few neutrinos were captured, though. Around the world, new detectors with larger tanks engage in the expedition, each seeking to learn from these subatomic particles how neutrinos dance and the sun shines. We have main engine start, three, two, one solid motor ignition and liftoff. I'd like to welcome you to the astronomical happening of the 20th century. What August 1969 in Woodstock was to the American rock community, April 1990 in Cape Kennedy will be to the scientific and astronomical community. Bacall and fellow Princetonian Lyman Spitzer led this fight for Hubble. Early disappointments aside, Bacall persevered as its tireless advocate. With Hubble, Bacall found the exotic objects of quasars residing in distant galaxies. Identified only in 1963 as star-like objects, quasars needed both the Hubble telescope and Bacall to show us their beauty and their ever still elusive nature. It's like going into a cathedral. It doesn't matter how many times you've seen the the paintings uh, on the ceiling. It can be awesome, it can be uh, inspirational, it can give you a very strong emotional feeling. When I look at space telescope pictures, every time I do and I see something extraordinary and new, it's like hearing a Beethoven quartet again.